Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin and today we are going to talk about insulin resistance. It is a very commonly discussed topic, a lot of videos out there, a lot of people talk about it, although not a lot of people are really qualified to talk about it. Uh, you can read and learn about it, that's great, uh, but when you advise you have to be really careful because uh, there may be some inaccurate advice about this topic. So let's dive into it. Again, today's topic is insulin resistance, and I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I am the founder of SugarMDs.com. Uh, basically, we are a virtual diabetes clinic. Uh, so you guys can talk to us on the video, chat, email, and we can do everything remotely. We have the technology. We just tell you to download a, maybe a software or an app, and then suddenly, next thing you know, we can know everything about you, uh, about your diabetes. So it's simple as that. It is extremely easy, effortless diabetes care for you guys. Uh, of course, before diabetes happens, what happens is insulin resistance, right? So there's so many people with insulin resistance and so many patients with, uh, with pre-diabetes and diabetes that that's, we cannot take care of all of them. It's just there are too many, and our job is to reduce the number of diabetes, get people off medications, uh, and get diabetes under control and put into remission if possibly cure the diabetes, right? So in order to do that, you really need to understand what insulin resistance is before it turns into diabetes. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is, for example, an insulin resistance syndrome. Cardiovascular disease is an insulin resistance syndrome. There are so many things that the insulin resistance can cause, including cancer, that insulin resistance is something that you have to really, really avoid. If you are not insulin resistant, you are going to have a very full life. Uh, you are going to enjoy your life much better than somebody with insulin resistance and diabetes. So as a result, avoiding is the key. So what is insulin resistance? Your body will become insulin resistant when there is too much work for insulin, right? So if you cannot carry something with one person, what do you do? You recruit two people, right? Uh, if you cannot do with two people, you recruit four people. So our insulin resistance is determined by the demand by our body. So what is the demand? The demand is our body size. So if we are growing uh, in size due to excessive calorie intake, as a result, you are going to end up needing much more insulin to take care of that bigger body. And at some point, uh, you're going to make more and more and more insulin, and your insulin curve will start to plateau because it's going to reach its maximum capacity to make insulin, and it starts going down. When your insulin starts going down, but your body size does not change, then your sugar starts going up. Uh, so uh, as a result, that, that creates diabetes and high blood sugars. Now, the diabetes actually is a term we just talk about the numbers. You know, if you have certain numbers, you have diabetes, right? We talked about in another video what is normal blood sugars. It's a very popular video. I recommend watching that as well. Uh, but before your blood sugar changes, the insulin resistance has actually a lot of consequences. So what happens pathologically? Again, we have a blog post about this and a very extensive blog in, on our website at sugarmds.com. You can read about that. Uh, the pathology, the pathophysiology is very interesting. So what happens is uh, you start making insulin and insulin, the job of the insulin is take the glucose, take the sugar and pack into fat. So if you're not utilizing that blood sugar, it's going to turn into fat right away. So if you are making so much money that you cannot spend in, in, in you know, let's say you, you are a very simple person, you only spend uh, $2,000 a month, but suddenly you start making um, $20,000 a month, you know, you're not going to just change your life right away and you may start the money accumulating in your bank too quickly. Um, so now, but when you think about this in, in, in the body, if fat accumulating in your 
potty because of too much sugar being packed into fat is not necessarily a good thing. Um, so that wealth of fat uh, turns out to be uh, problematic. So what happens is our body has fat cells, right? So the fat number of fat cells do not increase in number just because we are packing more fat. So the fat number of fat cells are the same. Similar to muscle, you know, when you work out, you don't make more muscle. You just increase the volume of the muscle cells. So same thing with the fat cells. When you are accumulating fat because of excess calories, uh, excess sugar, uh, that actually um, packs more uh, fat into your fat cells. So think about this. Let's say you have a room with two, three people. That is comfortable, right? So you can chat, you can have a good time. But when you pack, let's say, 30 people to the same, you know, let's say, um, 150 square foot room, uh, then that's going to be really uncomfortable. Some people will try to get out. They're, they cannot breathe. They want to, they're going to be like, oh my God, this is going to give me a panic attack, anxiety attack. You know, most people cannot take those crowded situations, especially nowadays with the virus. I'm not, definitely not. Uh, so as a result, you know, what happens with your body, with your fat cells, uh, there is inflammation starts happening. You know, the fat starts creating inflammation and your cells, the fat cells, start secreting inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-6, TNF-alpha. So these are like as if like a signal, as if like they are like alarm to the body saying that this is too crowded in here, uh, I'm giving you a warning, inflammation signs. So as a result, all these cells start making inflammation. It's like a rioting against the government saying that the hypothalamus to your brain, look, there's too much stuff in here. So those inflammatory markers actually turns out to be very harmful because they end up damaging other tissues and they make you feel tired. The same way you feel tired when you have a flu, when your body's immune system is very active and inflammatory cytokines are everywhere, you feel like down and drained. So the same way when you start developing insulin resistance, you start feeling very down and, 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 and tired. So as a result, it's a common complaint when the doctors say, oh, well, you got to exercise, etc." They're going to tell a doc, I don't feel good. I feel like so tired. I don't know how to exercise. So my answer to that is don't listen to your body. Sometimes even if you feel tired, even if when you wake up and you feel tired, you need to actually exercise. I guarantee you you're going to feel better after the exercise because then your inflammation is going to go down, your morphine level will, will go up, so suddenly you're going to start feeling better. So just tr take my advice, just do it. Uh, unless you're disabled and you have a broken leg or something, you should be able to get up and do something, although you feel tired overall, like achy, whatever. Stretch out first, and then we have an exercise video. Watch that, like how to really get into exercise. You cannot just jump into like super quick. But uh, you should be able to transition from a sedentary life to an active life uh, easier. So back to the pathophysiology. So. As you make more inflammation and your body becomes more tired, you end up basically sitting down more and feeling down and depressed and, and uh, eating more, etc. And then that just becomes like a snowball effect and suddenly it starts, starts growing and growing. Next thing you know that you're 300 pounds, 400 pounds. Again, this is not necessarily this people's fault. It's also there is a genetic component. So some people become insulin resistant a lot easier and some people are not you know like some people are gifted and they know how to make money they become richer a lot easier than than the other people so it, it is genetic variability nothing you can do about it so with with the body fat unfortunately some people tend to accumulate that body fat faster so they're not abnormal it's just a variation like just because somebody is 5 7 doesn't mean that they're super short or 5 5 is not super short they're still a human being they they still you know they still function well 
Uh, but they're, they're, the things that they can do if they want to play basketball, that will be really hard. So they need to mod modify their expectations compared to someone 6'4", right? Uh, and there are things that the 6'4 cannot do. 6'4 person may not be able to fit into small places where a 5'5 five, five person can do. So you should understand your strength in your health. So God is fair uh, most of the time. I mean, at least in the, at least overall, he's fair, right? So it, it, he, he may not give you everything you wanted right now, but he may have given you something else, uh, or he, he will give you something else later. So if you're an atheist, sorry about that, but... Uh, so I believe in Jesus. I believe in um, I believe in religions. Uh, I'm a Muslim perso personally, but uh, I believe in God. That's that's the uniting point, right? So uh, so as a result, you know, you guys should be able to uh, understand, and that actually just because you are gaining weight easily is not a curse on you. Um, actually, eating less has been uh, recommended by many religions. That is true for Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. That if you eat less, you're going to feel better overall, and you're going to have more time to worship uh, and so forth as well. Now, the bottom line is, if you are a person who tend to gain weight easily, then you have to modify your diet. Of course, if you're eating carbohydrates, uh, starches, those, those are the things that really trigger insulin response. Now, some people advocate going totally uh, carbohydrate-free, keto diet, right? So, well, that's great, you know, that's for an extremely motivated individual, for some women who have extreme conscious about their appearance, etc., the image problems, great, it works out for them, but the, for the majority of people, going car-free is very, very difficult. It can be okay for a while, but then in the long run, it is really, really difficult. I mean, if the carbs were not necessary, God wouldn't have given to us, but I would suggest that if you're eating carbs, try to stay away from processed carbs. I mean, there are fruits out there that you can eat that God gave you, right? So, so that still make your body uh, make insulin, but for example, when you eat apple, your insulin production will be much less than if you are eating the same amount of carbohydrates in a cookie it's just different things yeah it, they're, they're, they both taste sweet uh, but the things that are that comes in a package that is baked that's processed they're all not natural as a result your body gives excessive response of insulin and suddenly those things get packed into fat it gives a you know a short amount of pleasure but then you know, even after eating a dessert, you will feel like extremely tired. Uh, sometimes I do the same mistake, right? Sometimes you, you have to treat yourself. So I end up going eating a dessert after a meal. And the next thing you know, oh my God, I'm so tired. I want to go to bed. It's just insulin makes you feel that way. And think about it. If, if you're insulin resistant, your insulin levels are so high all the time, you will feel like, oh, I'm so tired all the time. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, inevitable. Uh, so as a result, you know, what I do personally, I exercise a lot. Uh, you know, if, you are, if I'm eating carbs, I want to make sure I burn it out. Because I know if I'm not uh, burning that carb out, it's going to turn into fat. And if you, keep, if, if you keep doing that, if you don't exercise but eat carbs and, or excessive carbs, then you are going to end up uh, basically um, packing that into fat. So some people eat carbs, they enjoy their carbs, but they may have prolonged fasting periods. Um, so that also helps because during the fasting time you burn the fat. Uh, so even if you pack fat sometimes from carbs, but you end up burning them later because you have a prolonged fast. But if you, if you keep eating every couple hours and, and you're, you're, you keep eating carbohydrates and you're not really burning them out, uh, that's, that's inevitable. That's going to turn into fat and that's the more fat cells, the more inflammation, the more inflammation, more insulin resistance. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. So how does insulin resistance really cause um, heart attacks? That's an interesting question, right? Some people actually will get heart attacks before they become diabetic just because they're insulin resistant. So what happens is, is inflammatory cytokines uh, and the fatty acids that comes, in, that's going to pushed out of your fat cells start circulating in your system. And then it messes the whole cholesterol metabolism. So as a result, your body 
uh, will start making a lot of bad cholesterol, a lot of triglycerides, a lot of LDL, VLDL, these are all the bad cholesterols. And then your HDL will go down because your HDL is the good one that actually picks up the cholesterol from the vessel walls, from the liver, etc. But when there is a dominance of bad cholesterol, your good cholesterol will go down. And as a result, you know, these people will eventually develop cardiovascular disease even before they become diabetic sometimes. So it is very important. Now, keto diet, for example, you have to be extremely careful. If you're going very low carb, then I would suggest increasing lean protein instead of just increasing fat. Again, I've seen some YouTube videos where people say, oh, fat is good for you. Well, not every fat, right? So if you're eating saturated fat or trans uh, fat, these fats are exactly the fat that's going to sit down on your vascular system and go going to cause heart attacks. So sometimes my patients will go on a keto diet, and when I check their cholesterol, their cholesterol, the bad cholesterol doubled up. I'm like, yeah, your diabetes is better, but your cholesterol now screwed up. So you don't want to do that either. So if you are going on a low-carb diet, very low-carb diet, that's okay if, you're, if you can maintain that. But you have to be very careful that you are keeping your saturated fat less than 10% and you are getting no trans fat, no trans fat at all. If you see trans fat on a label, put that down. If you are seeing saturated fat more than 10% of the daily value, put that down. So Mediterranean diet is the best way to actually uh, reduce your cholesterol and control your diabetes. And as long as you keep your calories down, then you are going to be okay. In, our, uh, in another video, we discuss about how much calories you need. Most people actually um, underestimate or overestimate how much actually they, uh, they need. So for example, your uh, body, so as a young individual, you need way more calories, uh, and then it also depends on your body weight, and it depends on how active you are. So if you're an active young man, you may need up to 15 calories per pound, right? But if you're a menopausal or postmenopausal woman who are not very active, you only need 10 calories per pound. So if you are 120 pound woman, um, you're only going to need 1,200 calories to maintain your weight. So sometimes patients come to me and they say, I'm down to 1,200 calories or 1,500 calories uh, a day. I am still not able to lose weight just because you know they're not very active, they're older. Especially women tend to consume less energy because of a less muscle mass. Uh, so as a result, you know, that becomes a problem and that becomes almost a, a conflict with the patient. I'm trying to tell them you need less and they think I'm crazy. But it, it is what it is. Unfortunately, that is a widespread problem. Everybody uh, seems to think that they need more calories than they should, and that's why 70% of America is overweight. Uh, unfortunately, this is what it is. So we have to change that. Um, again, you know, when you have carbs, that turns into fat right away. So the, what happens though, then, then there's no carbs in your system, so you end up getting hungry again. The problem with the carbs is that you eat the carbs and then you get hungry again. So the reason people like keto diet is because when you eat uh, fat, uh, fat keeps you full for a long time. So uh, that, because it slows down the absorption of the food, uh, so like for example, if you eat pizza, then you know that's going to keep you full for a long time because of the fat content, a lot of fat in that food, right? So, but most people just avoid the carbs totally in keto diet and just eat fat. Hopefully they are eating good fat, right? So good fat, not the bad fat as we discussed. Um, but then, um, you know, that, that fat amount, if it is too much in calories, that can also cause uh, weight gain. So most of the time the fat is satisfying, um, especially good fats if you're eating that and that can actually help you to keep your appetite in check. But if you're addicted to the sugar, which like a lot of people are, um, that, that takes a little extra effort. It's a mental game to try to say no to the carbs. A lot of people eat carbs as a comfort food. Uh, they're available, they're bored, etc. So uh, if you can avoid that and you just substitute that carb with something healthier, it could be a fruit, it could be a, something fatty uh, with high protein, but still healthy, uh, definitely will help that as well. But bottom line, if you want to improve your insulin resistance, you need to really cut the carbs, avoid processed carbs by all means, 
and reduce your total calories and stick with it for, for a while. Now, weighing yourself every day is not a bad idea. Some people think it is, but actually it's not. Harvard studied this, and uh, they showed that people who weigh themselves every day, they end up losing 7% extra weight than people who do not weigh themselves every day. Um, so I know it sounds like an obsession, but keeping track of your weight by looking at it every day with a sensitive uh, scale, I think will help as well. And don't be, distract, don't be uh, discouraged if your weight is going up and down a little bit. Uh, bottom line is if, if within a week or two, if you're overall losing weight, uh, that should definitely help. Again, at Sugar MDs, we help you to manage your weight, to avoid diabetes. If you have diabetes, reduce your insulin resistance and reduce the medications. That is all we are about and I hope this video is going to help you. See you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you give a thumbs up.